I'm about to share my experience as a manga artist. I've broken down this past 6 years in 7 phases. If you want to know who I am before I start getting into it, I have another video on my channel called Who Am I and Why Does It Matter? So it's gonna give you a perspective on what I'm about to say and where I come from. Alright, let's get to it. This video is an introduction to a series of 7 videos that are gonna come out in the next weeks and month. I want to mention that I'm not going to talk about how to draw this or that or get into any technical stuff. No. What I'm going to talk about is the reality of what it is to start with nothing and wanting to become a professional manga artist. What it's like to work every day for years without knowing if you'll succeed or not. And I'll be showing pages that I've drawn during each of these phases so yeah, I'm sorry for what you're about to see. Phase number one, the start. The start of a new hobby is always kind of the same thing. You try something out out of sheer curiosity, you figure out the craft, you know. At that point, you don't even know where to start or how to do the layout of a page. But you try, you copy stuff you like and you get out of your comfort zone. It's exciting and messy. As you can see, I didn't even know how to do the panels at first. I was just like, alright, at least I'm making something. I didn't even have a story or characters, I just drew a page. This phase is gonna last for a little while, until you start getting better at it and understanding the basics. Phase number two. Routine and giving up. Yes, I'm already talking about routine. What's happening here is that it quickly stops being new and exciting. It's not like an iPhone game that constantly gives you free crystals at the beginning to keep you playing. A lot of people start new things out of curiosity, which is great, but they stop after a few hours or a few days, because they start to realize that it takes constant effort and work to get better. Not only does it take effort to keep making those shitty pages, but it takes conscious effort to figure out how to improve them. At that point you're able to draw a full chapter. I've personally made a 64 pages one shot. It took me about 4 months to make it, which undoubtedly forced me to start new habits in order to keep drawing every day. The routine had started. I'm pretty positive that most people who wanted to try to draw comics have given up by that point. But if you push through, that means that you have the necessary self-discipline to put in the effort. That means that you've made the decision that you wanted to be a manga artist. Phase number three, time to change. Your pages are far from those of a professional manga artist. You start to dig into each skill necessary to make a manga and how to improve each of them. It is intimidating, daunting and overwhelming. You can't improve everything at the same time. So, you're more likely to start to work on the drawing first because drawing is the output between you and the reader. At that phase, I started to realize that I needed to draw more backgrounds. I was working on a more serious and great story and needed to build an atmosphere and a sense of what the world was like. I did it immediately. I started drawing those backgrounds. I was certainly not good at it, but I did it anyway. And obviously, it was taking more and more time to complete a page. Phase number four, slow improvements. It's working. You're developing your skills over years. Years. When I started, I thought I could become a professional in three years. That's the amount of time I gave myself. It's been six years since and I'm not even there. I'm close, but I'm not there. You have to understand that if you don't already have the fundamentals of drawing, you'll need to learn them. And sure, at first you're going to stick to manga style, copying mangas you like and trying to see how things are drawn in them. But then, you'll understand that you need to master the fundamentals and that sounds just like what your art teacher would say, but it's true. And if you keep practicing, you feel that you're lacking something. Anatomy, perspective, lighting, figure drawing. You will learn all of these and especially how to use them in your comic. Manga and comics usually simplify the human form. The classic example is the eyes and the proportions. But these things didn't just happen out of nowhere. You need to master the fundamentals before being able to warp them, play with them and employ them at the service of your comic. You'll eventually learn more about the craft itself like composition, panel layout or speech bubbles, giving you all the tools you need to make great pages. And it shows. But by learning all these new things, you start to take more and more hours to draw a single page. Phase number five, crisis. This one was pretty hard. 
I'm a naturally self-disciplined person. If I want to do something, I'll put in the effort. But this moment was hard. I was close to a professional level. By that I mean that if you saw these drawings in an actual published manga, it wouldn't feel off. Without being sensational, it just worked. I was working on a webcomic with about 100 readers, and I was at my fourth chapter. I'd been drawing this comic for a little more than a year and kept increasing the amount of work I was giving myself in order to get closer to the rhythm of a published manga. For chapter 3 and 4, I was drawing 2 pages a week. It took me about 20 and 30 hours for these 2 pages, so I had to find that time while still going to engineering school. 8 pages a month is 4 times too slow to become a professional. But I knew I had school at the same time, so I thought I could get to 16, 17 pages a month if I were working on it full time. A manga is about 180 and 200 pages, so that meant a book a year. Not great, but that's still something. However, the crippling thought of not being good enough had always been there. And this time it was taking place in the idea that I wasn't drawing fast enough. I had burned myself out at the fourth chapter, trying to draw more and more, and I had to apologize to the readers for having to stop the comic abruptly. I also stopped drawing for three months. Drawing comic is not only about quality, it's also about quantity. You can't be published if you can't keep up. I was not ready. But a year and a half later, I made a huge presentation of my manga and sent the email. Phase number six. Contacting the publishers. Conversing with publishers has been a rather slow process for me. Six months passed between the moment I sent the email and the moment I got the final response. For the first two months, I didn't have a response, so I assumed that my project was just not interesting. Only after that did they ask me to see more pages. I was pumped and excited. I sent some old pages and they said that my manga was interesting and had potential. I'm summing it up fast, but that took about a month to get there. They also said that they wanted to see more recent pages because these were two years old. I drew them and I sent them a month later. I was super confident. These pages were good and if they were interested by the old ones, these new ones were just gonna rock their socks off. A month and a half later, the editorial manager told me that it was good, but my drawings still lacked dynamism and life. I was surprised and disappointed, but I kinda understood what he meant. He then asked me how much time I was spending on a page. I said 10 hours. I knew it was too much, but considering the style I was going for, I thought that the publishers and I could find an arrangement. His response. You're taking way too long to draw a page. In the current state, we won't publish your manga. To give you an idea, you'd need to draw 30 pages a month to make two books a year. Phase number seven, absurd difficulty. This is the seventh and final phase of this video because this is the one I'm currently in. I want to say that it's the most difficult one to get out of simply because at that point you know enough to understand what it takes to make it happen. But actually doing it is what is difficult. The path is clear but filled with thorns. A comparison I've made is I feel like I've been climbing this volcano for six years. Now that I'm at the top, I'm in front of the editorial manager who looks at me, looks at the creator and says, now jump. I know exactly how to do it. I can jump. It's not hard. But jumping into a crater, there's no going back. You'd have to give your life without even knowing what's going to happen at the landing. 30 pages a month is absurd. For me, it would mean 300 hours of work every month, which means 75 hours a week. More than 10 hours a day every day. This is not okay. Another solution would be to change my style to make the pages easier to draw in, in classic black and white. But that's not what I want. But it's naive to think that you can ask the business to fit to you and adapt to what you want. I'm not trying to make a statement against the industry or even what the publishers are asking the authors to do. I'm trying to make you understand that if you want to be part of the industry, if you want to become a published manga artist, you have to fit with the business one way or the other. Do not expect it to change for you because it won't. You're probably thinking, what, that's it? It's impossible, just move on? No, it's not. There are plenty of ways to draw 30 pages a month. You just have to find one that fits your needs. However, none of them are easy. They may ask you an absurd amount of work, money and energy all at once. 
enough to make you question your life at that point. Is this really what I want? Am I willing to work 55 hours a week and spend $700 a month to pay a second artist to make this comic possible? I'm positive that if you still want to pursue this goal at that point, you have to be insane. And I've realized that while writing this video. But I'm still doing it. I'm still figuring out a way to make these 30 pages happen. There is a gap between being a hobbyist and becoming a professional. This is not easy, and I shouldn't be surprised that the final step is the hardest and that it's making me question life itself, making me question the value of work, the value of art. This is not just a matter of putting in the effort anymore. This is a matter of putting a life on the line, diving into the crater. Health, money, time, energy, social life. These are real. Your dream is not. Not yet. But are you willing to sacrifice these resources that make up your life to make your dream a reality? Because this is what it takes to become a manga artist. Alright, this may be a little harsh to hear, but I feel like giving a raw depiction of the reality was necessary. I am going to make detailed videos for each of these phases talking about what I've learned and hopefully helping you go through them as smoothly as possible. So, you know, subscribe if you want to be notified when these videos come out. The first one should be out next week. Leave a like if you enjoyed the concept and leave your questions and suggestions in the comments. Thanks for sticking to the end and see you in the next video.